Don't try slinking out of here without settling your tap. <laughs> I never. Oh, come on, Diana. Let a man invite in peace. Huh? Thank you. Welcome to Shuckers. They call me mother. What can I do for you? Table for six, please. Table for six. What's the occasion? We're celebrating this young man's last few days of bachelorhood. Oh, -ho! ladies, I want you to take good care of these handsome fellas. Couple of pictures to start off? Sounds lovely. All right. Thank you. Why the sour face, Higgins? Sit down. I still think we should have gone to the burlesque. This place is more respectable. We can drink beer, eat oysters, and none of us will get in trouble with her indoors. How you fellas doing? Well, we could use a refill. All right, right up. <clears throat> yeah, uh, a garden, a couple goats, and a chicken. What would you prefer, goats or chickens? All right, who's up for an arm wrestle? Two dollars says I can be any man here. Well, I'll take that bet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> go on, Higgins. Oi, I know you. You should. You arrested me. Then why are you behind bars? It didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maddie. Why don't you play something a little bit more upbeat? <laughs> I love when you play for me. Hey, you're good. You can't be stove. You need to pay for my drink. So can I see no sit down? <clears throat> pay the man for his beer. <laughs> oh, sugar girl, another round for the oyster king. <laughs> More respectable, you were saying, sir? Shut your trap, Higgins. All right, boys, it's goblin time. Who will take the crown? <laughs> Three, two, one, and time. Gentlemen, drop your oysters. Take a break, grab a beer. While we set up for round two. More over here. More here. Crikey. Should have gone to the burlesque. Chap was alive and well an hour ago. Where's Mrs. Hart? There was no answer at her home. We'll get her post-mortem tomorrow. Well, it looks pretty cut and dried to me. Someone slashed his throat and chucked him in a barrel. Hmm. And then hammered the lid back on in haste. Was there anyone suspicious here this evening? Well, yes, sir. There was a man with a, an elaborate mustache. What made him suspicious? He mocked me, sir, and then disappeared for the rest of the evening. Mocking you is hardly a crime, Higgins. More like an amusing pastime. Look, if we're talking suspects, I hate to say it, but the dead fella, the bloodied constable, took his nose earlier in the evening. That's right. And then Tucker was missing from the bar for a time afterwards. Constable Tucker. Oh, yes, sir. A word, please. You look ill. Yes, I'm sorry. I had too much to drink. I can see that. I is it true that you fought with the victim earlier tonight? Again, I... 
I've behaved very badly this evening. Mm. And did this bad behavior include murder? No, I, of course not. I'm an officer of the law. I'd, I'd, no, I'd never do that. You disappeared for part of the evening. Where did you go? Oh, that I, uh, I blacked out in the water closet. I, the drinks and, and the oysters. Would you excuse me? Henry, see to it that Constable Tucker does not leave the premises. You want me to guard the washroom, sir? Yes. Fine. Poor Meg. He was one of our best customers. I can't believe somebody did him dirty. Miss Malone, is it? Detective, yes. Were you well acquainted with the victim? As acquainted as you get, serving a man booze. I mean, Mick Peterson was a bachelor. He lived alone. He had big dreams, but not the means to make them come true. Hmm. And were you present the entire evening? Hovering like a hawk. It takes a firm hand to guide this motley crew. What about the hour leading up to the discovery of his body? Oh, the music was hopping by then. <laughs> I was having a laugh on the dance floor. And your staff? Oh, ask him yourself. There is one known criminal in the bar. Oi, Madeline Tompkins. Uh, no, Maddie's gone home for the night. Then we'll need her address. <sighs> this is it. The girls took the barrel from here. Thank you. No blood, no signs of a struggle. It's possible the murder occurred somewhere else. And the murderer rolled the barrel back into cold storage with the body inside. Precisely. But everyone present tonight claims to have an alibi. Keeping the timeline straight is a challenge. The whole night is a bit of a blur, if I'm honest. Mm. Where is Hart? We haven't been able to reach her. Sir, might I suggest you go home and get some rest? I can finish up here, and we will get Miss Hart's postmortem tomorrow. Thank you, Mucka. I apologize for my absence last night. Social engagement? As they say, all work and no play. <clears throat> This appears to be the fatal wound. His carotid artery was nicked. He would have bled out quite quickly. Was there a lot of blood at the scene? Not a bloody drop. At least none visible to the naked eye. I'll return to Shuckers and conduct a more thorough search. How about the murder weapon? Um, some sort of short, pointed instrument. Like an oyster shucker. You suspect one of the Shucker girls? You bet I do. And I know exactly which one. I see you've put my generous charitable donations to good use. Yes, thank you. We are so grateful to all of our donors. How can I help you today, Mrs. Pinch? Dr. Ogden, I am at my wit's end. Wit's end, I tell you. My medicine has vanished from the chemist's shelves. Oh, which medicine? Paul's Coca Wine, the keystone of perfect health. Uh, yes, I've seen the advertisements. And you know of its restorative powers. It cures neuralgia, sleeplessness, anemia. And it leaves absolutely no after effects. Well, actually, Mrs. Pinch, Hall's cocoa wine contains cocaine, which is rather addictive and harmful. It is a miracle tonic that keeps my spirits high while I attend to my many charitable commitments. Oh, plus, it's mm -hmm. done wonders for my little Jenny's shyness. Oh, I don't recommend you give cocaine to your child. Oh, but she was such a mopey little thing without it. Cocoa wine has transformed her into the liveliest little six-year-old you've ever seen. Yes, well, it's no longer on the shelves because the new Opium and Drug Act prohibits cocaine for non-medical use. Which is why I've come to see you. You can provide me with a prescription. I cannot. Not in good conscience. There are far healthier ways to increase your vitality. Oh, my goodness. This looks expensive. <sighs> well, yes. It's a blood pressure monitor, and it's rather expensive. <sighs> Mrs. Pinch. I really don't think cocaine is the answer. I need my cocoa wine. Mrs. Pinch. I need it. Mrs. Pinch, you need healthy food and exercise, but you do not need cocaine. If you're not going to help me, then why did I donate all that money to this stupid clinic of yours? Oh, oh, that's right. Oh. What was that about? 
suppose you know why I've brought you in. I do, and I'm shocked. Aren't you a married man? Don't get cheeky with me. I know a career criminal when I see one. Constance Weatherly was murdered to save you from an arranged marriage. Not by me, she wasn't. By your criminal acquaintances. I have loyal friends. Is that a crime? No. But stabbing a man in the neck with an oyster shucker is. Poor Mick. Don't know why anyone would deal him such a fate, but it wasn't me. I wasn't even there when that happened. So you claim. And to God. Finished my shift at the piano and went home. Have you any witnesses to that? No. But I wasn't at the bar. Ask anyone. I will. All right, then. Well, what's this supposed to prove, then? This device uses ultraviolet light in order to detect evidence that may not be visible to the naked eye. Mm, look at those pretty colors. These pretty colors are traces of where blood has been. This was a group stabbing? No, you get. Shocking's risky business. Show them your scars. Mm-hmm. It's no mystery why those knives are bloody. Right. Mm. I would like to have another look at your cold storage room, please. Here as well. Wait, come back. What is it? Hmm. Appears to be a buildup of residue from dirty palm prints. It's a strange place to be gripping the wall, sir. Indeed. Perhaps that's because it's not just a wall. No. Uh, Toronto Constabulary, open up! Uh. Police, halt! Sir, it's him, the mustache man! Oh, sir. Look. Blood. Your name, sir? Harry Hayes. And what is your role here? Protecting the girls. Prot from what? Customers? If necessary, yeah. Was it necessary last night? Oh, no. No, no. no. Uh, last night was easy as pie. Not for Mick Peterson. Yeah. Poor Mick. Well, I guess that was his blood in the stairs. Anyways, so Bloody staircase is bad for business, so when I noticed it today, I figured I'd mop it up. <clears throat> Did you happen to hear any voices or commotion coming from here? Well, that door is pretty thick. And you didn't see the bloody stairs last night? No. no uh, we use the front staircase. Customers use the back. Uh... What exactly is upstairs? <clears throat> My office is the red door at the end of the corridor. And these other rooms? You appear to be sleeping quarters, sir. Right. That's it. I mean, sleeping quarters. <laughs> when the girls get sleepy. All right. It's a bordello. Henry, search the rooms. You didn't mention a bordello last night. Yeah, because my girls aren't hurting anybody. This place keeps them off the streets. Miss Malone, I assure you, I am only interested in finding Mr. Peterson's killer. So you're not arresting me for running a body house? Not if you cooperate. Well, what do you want to know? The names of the clients that were upstairs here last night. Names? <laughs> I barely know their faces. They all look the same to me. And I wasn't up here. Ask anybody. Miss McKean, did you see Mother Malone at the bordello last night? What bordello? There is no need for deception. I have a fairly good idea of what's going on here. Now, did you see her? I quit working upstairs a while ago. I'm strictly behind the bar now.
Ladies, I'm aware that there is a bordello operating on the second floor here. Now, I am willing to overlook this illicit activity if you provide me with the names of the clients you had upstairs with you last night. The killer must have tilted the barrel against the stairs and then rolled Peterson's body down into it. And there's a bordello on the second floor. Yes, but none of the women will divulge the identities of their clients. Doesn't matter. I know who the killer is. Thank you, Higgins. I barely got settled in my cell when you're already dragging me back here. He's smitten. You never told me about the bordello. You want to schedule a romp? You lied to me. You weren't at home the night of the murder. You were upstairs. You got me. I'm a working girl. Surprise, surprise. But I'm not a murderer. I don't believe you. Fair enough. Maybe you'll believe him. Constable Tucker? Yeah. Who do you think I went upstairs with? Higgins, take this one back to the cells till I sort this out. Tucker, in here now. I gotta go. The boss needs me. All right, sweetie. Selfish! Is that your fiance? Yes, sir. We just spoke to Madeline Tompkins. Is there something you'd like to? I'm sorry, I lied. I was blacked out in the loo. I, I was with her, the, that woman. I. Please don't tell my fiance. You should be more concerned with the prospect of going to prison. Prison? <laughs> For what? Murder. You fought with Peterson that night. Yeah, he bloodied my nose, but I probably deserved it. I didn't kill him. You had no further dealings with Mr. Peterson? No. Okay, except I passed him later in the corridor. What corridor? Upstairs. Was he with a woman? No. No, alone. Heading towards the red door at the end of the hall when I was heading back downstairs. I didn't kill him, Detective Murdoch. Sir, you gotta believe me. No, I don't gotta believe anything, Constable Tucker. You've already lied to me. Therefore, I will be holding you in our cells until we find out who killed Mr. Peterson. It makes me want to weep. Oh, it makes me want to wring Eleanor Pinch's neck. What's wrong? Oh, Mrs. Pinch gave a slanderous account of her alleged mistreatment here at the clinic. Dr. Ogden was dismissive of my condition and refused to treat me, said the tearful Mrs. Pinch. Ugh. So I sought help from Dr. Jasper Katz at Toronto General, who provided me with the medication I so desperately required. That's ridiculous. She doesn't desperately require cocaine. This part boils my blood. The beleaguered charity organizer further describes profound regret for donating money to the new women's clinic, which she regards as a haven for quacks. What are you going to do, Dr. Ogden? Well, I guess I'm going to keep my chin up and continue to serve the medical needs of the women of Ontario. What else can I do? Well, if it were up to me, I'd march down to that gaudy mansion of hers and smack Mrs. Eleanor Pinch right across her smug little face. <laughs> well, that's not a course of action that I would recommend, Margaret, however tempting. Madeline Tompkins and Constable Tucker have corroborated each other's alibis. Right. So they were upstairs. At it. You know, made up. At it. Bone to bone, flesh on flesh. Indulging in the bit of the old... I, I believe I understand what you are grinding at. Uh, uh. <clears throat> My point is that Constable Tucker saw Peterson on the second floor. Why was Peterson upstairs? That is unknown, but Tucker did see him near Mother's office, so I'm bringing her in for questioning tomorrow. Good. Very much enjoyed our dinner last evening. And I very much enjoyed our dessert. Perhaps after we visit the Starbright, we can adjourn to my house. For more dessert? Oh, my sweet tooth is ravenous.
Oh. Are you cold? Here, take my jacket. Oh, I left a shawl at work. It's just around the corner. Wait outside. I'll only be a second. Okay. Is someone here? Hello? Hey, you. What's wrong? Just a bit shaken. Who is that? I don't know. <gasps> As you can see, the intruder is sliced into Mr. Peterson's torso. For what purpose? Let's find out. Ooh, and this is where I take my leave. Good evening, Violet. <sighs> Until next time, Isaiah. Was desecrating the corpse a form of retaliation? Was the killer making a statement? Or was this an ill-conceived attempt at concealing some particular form of poison? This can't be. What is it? This man is a human oyster. Then is a police detective. Toronto's finest. <laughs> and you are? Uh, Millicent Drysdale, sir. Miss Drysdale is observing me as a part of her medical education. Oh. Well, then you must know that Dr. Ogden is truly Toronto's finest. Why would you x-ray a bunch of pearls? Well, there's something odd about these. Pearls typically are irregular in shape and vary in sizes. These are all perfectly spherical and identical in size. Where are they from? Uh, from the murdered man who was found at the bordello where Constable Tucker's bachelor party was being held. Bordello? But Thomas organized that party. I believe so. Huh? <laughs> My husband took his constables to a bordello. Did you obtain these pearls? From the stomach of a murder victim. Good heavens. Oh, oh my. Are these pearls valuable? That depends. Natural pearls are rare and extremely valuable. Cultured pearls were invented by the Japanese and are slightly less so. I find this whole matter quite distasteful. Yes, it was a gruesome discovery. I was referring to pearl cultivation. Can you imagine the unwashed throats of the hoi polloi draped in cheap cultured pearls? It makes me want to farm. Oh. <clears throat> These are cultured. Who supplies cultured pearls here in Toronto? There is only one man I know of who is trying to sell this locally. I booted him from my shop. What's his name? I didn't ask. He was a tall, beer-bloated ruffian who ripped the fish. Any idea where he's from? He said, uh, Prince Edward Island. Uh, excuse me. Hey! What? 
What were you doing outside the morgue last night, huh? Let me go! Help! This man's trying to kidnap me! Help! Please! Mr. Buchanan, what's going on here? Good afternoon, Miss McKee. Is that? You're unwell? <sighs> Just a touch of the bottle ache. Cons with the territory. Here you go, darling. Hair the dog. Fix you right up. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> that child could not handle her liquor. What can I do for you, detective? Who supplies your oysters? Ah, I'm Mr. Dabney Ferks who supplies us. Why? Does he also deal in pearls? Does this look like a jewelry store to you? Our coroner found 20 cultured pearls in Mr. Peterson's stomach. He swallowed pearls? Why? I mean, Mick wasn't the sharpest pin in that cushion, but surely he... <laughs> I believe he stole them and was hiding them from you. <laughs> really? And well, where'd you cook up that giant pot of twaddle? Mr. Peterson was seen near your office the night of his murder. Hmm. Well, Mick was always hurting for money. Could have been trying to steal from me. But if I had a hoard of pearls stashed away, would I still be slinging cheap whiskey for a bunch of drooling drunks? What about this Mr. Ferkser? Did Mr. Peterson know him? Uh, you know, come to think of it, I think he did. And was this Mr. Ferkser here the night of Mr. Peterson's murder? I didn't see him. I mean, could have been. It was pretty busy that night. Where might I find him? Sir, Buster Farley is waiting for you in the interview room. Just give me one minute. <laughs> Margaret, what do I owe the pleasure? You took your constables to a bordello? I took them to an oyster bar. So you're telling me Detective Murdoch lied to me? Because I distinctly remember him saying bordello! Well, you see, Margaret, it was both. And I didn't know about the bordello part. How could you not know? You are the police inspector! I just didn't. And even if it is part bordello, I didn't partake in anything but oysters and whiskey. Oh, I find that very difficult to believe. The world is full of things that you find difficult to believe. And I can't relieve you of that burden right now because I have to go interrogate an eight-year-old. Huh? Now, if you'll excuse me. <gasps> an eight-year-old? I didn't do nothing wrong. I wasn't near no morgue. You better not lie to me, son. Or what? You'll hang. You wouldn't. My hanging has got this tiny wee noose that will fit perfectly round your neck, and he's just itching to test it. I was paid a pack of bub boys to stand there and be a lookout. A lookout? But you were just approaching the morgue when you were spotted. I had to bum a light. <laughs> See, I'll tell you what. I'll let you go if you can describe who hired you. Can even draw you a picture. Perfect. For a quarter. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. There you go. I'll get you a pencil and paper. Dabney Ferkser, Toronto Constabulary would like a word. Mr. Ferkser. This is your final warning. And that's when I found Ferkser at the flop house. From the looks of it, he'd been dead several days. So we may be talking double murder. Have you lost your mind telling my wife about the bordello? Can we finish discussing the Peterson murder case first? 
I've already solved the bloody Peterson murder. Margaret is furious. What were you thinking? I'd assumed you'd told her about the bordello. And how did you solve the murder case? Have you met my wife? Why the hell would I tell her about the bordello? I solved the murder based on an eyewitness description. I found her, Inspector. I didn't kill Mick Peterson. What, you admit that you desecrated his corpse? Yeah. Sorry about that. So you knew about the pearls? <sighs> I caught Mick upstairs counting him. He said he was going to cash the pearls in to buy a house. Then I said, you got so many, why don't you give me some of those? Which is when he gulped the whole lot down. Where did he get them? He wouldn't say. But after he was dead, I thought to myself, Blee, no. Mick don't need him anymore. Maybe I could buy myself a house. So you tried to rob the corpse? Not my proudest moment. What about Dabney Firk, sir? Did you kill him? Oh? The man who supplied the oysters to Mother Malone. How could I kill someone I never met? An anonymous source tells the Telegraph that Mrs. Eleanor Pinch was not, in fact, ill when she demanded cocaine from Dr. Julia Ogden, unless one would call the depraved appetite of a drug addict an illness. Well, actually, I would call it that. So this at least casts doubt. Well, I don't care about that, William. Patient confidentiality, on the other hand, is sacred. Someone at the women's clinic has violated all professional standards by leaking this. And you know who that someone is? Unfortunately, yes. I believe I do. Mr. Ferkser was strangled. Have you established a time of death? I can't say precisely, but he was dead at least four days before you found him. Well before Mr. Peterson's death. You think the same man killed both Peterson and Ferkser, sir? It's possible. Miss Hart, has your post-mortem revealed any clues as to our murderer's identity? Well, as the bruises indicate, the killer was quite strong and strangled Mr. Ferkser with his bare hands. And these distinctive indentations reveal he was wearing several rings. So our killer had strong hands and wore rings. I know someone who fits that description. But she's all woman. You want me to do what? Wrap your hands around the clay and squeeze, like this. How's that? Let's try again. And this time, stop when I say so. <laughs> Arts and crafts day, is it? Just do it. Enough. As I suspected. Do you suspected that clay is mushy? <laughs> Cracker Jack work, Pally. You killed Dabney Ferkser. The marks left on his neck match the indentations caused by the rings on your fingers. You strangled him to death. I hate a bragger, don't you? I find hate counterproductive. Well, la di da say Murdoch. <laughs> Anyhow, loud mouth Dabney kept blabbing on about his precious pearls and how much money he was gonna make off of them, and as I was saying, I hate a braggart, but I love money. So I stole him. He caught me doing it, and he attacked me. He attacked you? Yeah, so I strangled him to death in self-defense. We'll let the courts decide the validity of those claims. So you killed Ferguson. You then discovered that Peterson had stolen the pearls from you. 
So again, <laughs> whoa there. I did not kill Meg. He was annoying as hell, but a true kind soul. Can't believe he stole from me. <laughs> Didn't think he had it in him. When we examined his dead body, he literally had the pearls in him. Well, that could have been why he was following me around all night, trying to figure out where I'd hid them. Lately, he'd been going on and on about, you know, saving money to start a family. And I'd say to him, if that's the case, why are you spending like a drunken sailor at my oyster bar then? And the last patient we'll see on our rounds today is Mrs. Takahara. Who is recovering from a severe infection. Yes, and I was thinking that you could perform the examination. Oh, well, could I? Mm -hmm. Julia, <laughs> you want to see me? Yes, please come in. We'll close the door behind you. Take a seat. Oh. <laughs> What's this? I think you know. And I appreciate what you were trying to do by giving that interview. Interview? However, it was a violation of patient confidentiality. Unfortunately, Margaret, I'm going to have to dismiss you from your position here. But I didn't give any interview. I know you did it with the best of intentions, but I just can't sanction that kind of behavior. I did no such thing. I am appalled that you would accuse me. If it wasn't you, then who, Margaret? <sighs> So Mother Malone killed Ferguson. So what about Peterson? Well, she claims she didn't. She says she didn't even know he had the pearls. Well, then it's got to be Madeline Tompkins. I'm not so sure about that. He said he was going to cash the pose in to buy a house. Lately, he'd been going on and on about, you know, saving money to start a family. I quit working upstairs a while ago. I'm strictly behind the bar now. <laughs> So who killed Peterson, Madeline Tompkins or Mother Malone? Maybe neither one of them. Detective Murdoch, what can I do for you? Miss McKean, how far along are you in your pregnancy? Pregnancy? What do you want about? I think you know precisely what I am on about. This is an interesting device. It's a bung starter. Used to open the whiskey barrels. Also used to hammer shut oyster barrels containing dead bodies? No, I don't know what you're... Why would you kill the father of your child? Mick Peterson? Some father he'd have been. Drunk and penniless. Spoken phony declarations of undying love. Then I see him following mother around like a... like a drooling pervert. Canoodling with Maddie right under my nose. That made you angry. Furious. So I, uh... I followed him upstairs to have a word. He was all apologies. Oh, Diana, I'm going to marry you and buy us a house. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> I couldn't take the empty promises no more. I lost my temper, and then I swung at him with my sugar, but I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> Not all of his promises were empty. He could have bought you a house with the pearls he had. Pearls? What pearls? That's excellent news. Thank you. I've brought you the inmate, sir. Thank you, Higgins. The inmate who's been locked up in a jail cell for days now? That's generally where the inmates are kept, Higgins. Locked up like an animal, eating jail food. Higgins, that's enough. Dismissed. Oh, can't I watch? Get out and shut the door. 
And put the kettle on. Yes, sir. Have a seat, Constable Tucker. I guess you know what I'm about to do. Please don't fire me, sir. Don't humiliate yourself. Please, I need this job. A constable needs to conduct himself with dignity and integrity. I was drunk. I'm sorry. Please, I I've never even been with a woman before that night. I, I don't even know that I did it right. Please. Please. I'll become a better man. I promise. Please give me a second chance. It's not me you need to be begging to. What's she doing here? Waiting for an explanation as to why you were in our cells. What am I supposed to tell her? That's up to you. Thomas? Margaret? Oh, what's the occasion? I need to tell you the honest truth about that bachelor party. I didn't know about the bordello when I took the lads there. I was naive. I'm sorry that I upset you. No, Thomas. I'm sorry for accusing you. I know what it's like to be blamed for something you didn't do. I quit my job today. Why? What happened? Uh, sorry for the interruption. Tom, may I have a word with your wife? Of course. Ladies? I'm so sorry, Margaret. I jumped to the wrong conclusion. We won't be working with Millicent any longer. Ah. <laughs> William? Hello, Julia. Uh, Susanna asleep? Down for the night. Uh, what's all this? You've been working very hard running the clinic. Tonight, you should relax and enjoy some oysters. What a nice surprise. Are they raw? They are. I've heard that oysters have aphrodisiac properties. Uh, I don't think that is scientifically proven. I don't either. But we should at least test out the theory. <laughs> The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. What a lovely fair. Yes, we should hurry along though, William. I do need to get back to the hospital and then meet with the new nanny. Make sure she's a tough nut. Need someone to protect with the Susanna. True enough, but I intend to do anything and everything to ensure that no danger ever befalls her again. This is a special time to be a parent, Doctor. I remember taking my life to fairs like this. I'm sure you're right. It's just hard to appreciate the moment when one has a thousand different things to do. I scarcely have a moment alone with my thoughts these days. Miss Hart. Oh, Miss Hart. A few questions. Do you have any contact with the Carmichael family? Have you seen them? I really don't have anything to say. Oh, were you invited to Arthur Carmichael's funeral? Or are they still looking for his body? Oh, yeah. That's enough. Leave the lady alone. Move along. Everywhere I go. It will pass in time, Miss Hart. Surely do hope so. Oh, William, look at that. Your wish made true. Sounds like a bit of fun. Fun has nothing to do with it. The mechanical man has special powers. Oh, an automaton. He will grant you one wish, but be careful what you wish for. Right then, how much is it? I could use a wish. Well, it's free of charge, sir. But a word of caution. Your wish will surely come true. It's a good Yorkshire price. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having a go. I don't know. It sounds silly to me. Oh, come on, William. It's just a bit of fun. We'll make it quick. You must approach the man one at a time. Place your hand on the crystal ball. And wish. I wish I could leave all responsibilities behind. <laughs> I 
I wish that I could blend in, just like everyone else. I wish that the city could be rid of vermin. I wish that I never put Susanna in danger again. Your wish made true. So, do you think your wish will come true? Yeah. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. Oh, your wishes will come true, every word. Isn't that right? Your wish made true. Everyone's wish comes true. Your wish made true. Oh. The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Everyone wants a peaceful life, the chance of solitude. No interruptions, no distractions. It sounds like a dream, but sometimes dreams turn into nightmares. That's everything I could find around here. Thank you, Violet. Sorry it's taken me so long to clear all my things. Oh, well, not to worry. Much of these supplies are yours. Without what you brought, the shelves would be empty. Well, I should be going. Between my marriage and my job and my child, I scarcely have time to breathe anymore. Where's all this going? Oh, to the women's clinic. The place could use a little personality. Oh, there is one more thing. Ah. Uh. I'd almost forgotten about this. Whose brain is it? <sighs> he was a murderer who was hanged, James Gillies. And you've kept his brain? I thought it would be worth studying, but I haven't found the time. anyone else was here. Oh, I'm headed home. Just finishing cleaning up a few last things. Well, good. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, then. See you tomorrow. All right. <sighs> Hello? Oh, William. Yes, I'm still at the office, but I'm heading home soon. Yes, I will make it home for supper. I promise. <laughs> see you soon. Matilda? 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 Matilda. You don't need to worry about her anymore. No, no. 
No, stay away from me, leave me alone. Oh, I can't do that. You understand why I came back here, don't you, Julia? Because I'm not done with you yet. You're dead. Oh, you knew I would return. And now that I'm here, oh, I am going to enjoy it. Julia, what have you done? Matilda! Matilda! Murdoch residence, please. Residents, please connect me to the Crabtree residence. One moment. Julia? Effie. What's the matter? Yes, yes, Effie. I need your help. Julia, what is going on? I need you to come to the clinic right away. Yes. Yes, and of just course. Come, please. what happened? I don't know what happened. Give me this. Where did this blood come from? James Gillies. James Gillies? The murderer? I killed him. But Julia, he's been dead for years. I know, but, but he was here and he, he came at me and I killed him. Julia, that's impossible. I know. But it makes no sense, but that's what happened. He, his brain was in the jar. And then it disappeared. And then he was here, and he killed Matilda, he must have, and, and then he came after me. Julia, you need to calm down. What day is it? It's the 31st. Oh, my lord. What? That's the day James Gillies was hanged. That explains all of this, then. What do you mean? Explains what? Well, why you're so fixated on him. Your mind has been triggered, and your imagination's playing tricks on you. No, no, it was real. I he was here, and I killed him. He, he's in the examination room. I'll tell you what. Why don't we go together and see if he's there? No, no, no I'm, I'm not going. I can't. All right, then I'll go. No, please, Julia, Effie, don't go. Julia, I'll be right back. Everything's going to be all right. I'll be back in the briefest of moments. You'll be all right. I'll be right back. And we'll have so much fun. What? Effie, why did you say that? What did you say? I said, we're going to have so much fun. No!
Meal time. You need to eat. Up to you. Food's not going anywhere. Julia. You. Of course. Who else would it be? Why are you doing this to me? Please, leave me alone. Oh. You'll be left alone, Julia. You can just sit right here, think about what you've done for the rest of eternity. You got what you wish for. No responsibilities. The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Imagine a young woman who has it all, fortune and fame, but fame comes at a price. If one wishes to disappear into the faceless masses, what happens when that wish comes true? What'd you think? Preposterous. It seemed real to me. A whole town ganging up on that man just because he was different. The man was made of reanimated body parts. So? The dead can't come back to life, Isaiah. Tell that to your father. Touche. <laughs> Miss Hart, a couple of questions. We haven't the time. Will you be taking legal action against the Carmichael family? No comment. And who are you? A man telling you to leave her be. Sorry about that. Hardly your fault. I'm the one that chose to marry into that family. You were in love. I suppose so. I also like the scandal and attention. These days, I can't stand it. I never thought I'd say this, but I wish I could just blend in like everyone else. You? A woman as beautiful as Violet Hart can never blend into the crowd. <laughs> Stop. You want me to walk you the rest of the way? It's out of your way. I'll be fine. As you wish. Good night. I'll call on you tomorrow. around the corner, they'll take you in if you need anything. Get off of me! You all right? Yes, I think so. We should get out of here. Oh, the morgue is right around the corner. Keep a gun. For safety. You get a lot of intruders? More than I'd like. Well, it may prove useful. Do you think that man followed us? No, but something strange is happening in Toronto tonight. <gasps> Are you all right? Oh, oh fine. <sighs> You're hurt. What? With this wound on your hand. Oh, 
My man must have bitten me. Not just now. That's impossible. What do you mean? Well, it's badly infected. To get to this point, it would have taken days. Well, perhaps he was ill? <sighs> Come on, we need to clean this. <sighs> now, this might hurt. Oh! Oh! Oh, I've never felt such a deep pain in my life. Oh. We're almost done. Oh. Everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Too tight? Oh, it's fine. <sighs> there we go. <sighs> His heart? What's wrong? He's still alive! What are we gonna do? Uh, I would suggest we leave. And then what? Telephone the army? Let's go. Wait, I have an idea. You lure him over, and I'll come behind him and shove him in. I... Oh, fine. Excuse me, my good man, would you... Care to attack me? Yes? Right over here. Oh, right. Oh, this way. All right. This way. Yes, yes. Very good. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Just as I hope. Yes. Beast away. No! Oh, that's not good. No! It's impossible. Those people are dead. Well, they've returned to life or something like it. Oh. What's wrong? Something's not right. The bite, the infection, it's taking over my body. I must be like... No, it can't be. My mind keeps going blank. Violet, Violet, you have to promise. Don't let that happen to me. I won't. You're going to be all right. I'm most certainly not all right. Before I turn, you have to kill me. No. You have to. Don't let me become one of them. All right. Let me try something. If you turn into one of those things, I'll inject you. There's enough heroin in here to kill a horse. Good, good. How is it? Oh, it's coming on. This could be it. No, just hold on. Do it, do it, do it. There's no reason to wait. <laughs> <laughs> To get out of here. Violet, what's wrong? They're coming for us. We have to go. What's wrong with you? You're one of them. You're just like them. The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, Tom began to scream. What a horrid nightmare from such a lovely dream. Higgies! Sir? Another trap's gone off. Oh. Oh, oh, 
Looks like we got one. Oh, these rodents, they're all over the bloody city. Oh. What would you like me to do with this one? What kind of question is that? Throw it away. Oh, right. Oh, Margaret, to what do I owe the pleasure? I've brought you lunch. Oh, and what do we have here? It's an old family recipe. Ah. Minced meat and onion pie. Ooh. Try it. <laughs> I will. Looks good. <laughs> have you seen the paper? Oh. There's been trouble. Too many prisoners, not enough cells. That could be good for Bobby at his next parole hearing. Oh, I don't know, Thomas. We've gotten our hopes up before. Bobby's been a model prisoner. We can only hope that he'll be home soon. Bring the family back together again. Hmm. Well, actually, I'm off to visit him today. Look what I bought for him. Ooh, what's that? A rosary. Still on the Catholic kick, is he? It's his choice, Thomas. Isn't it beautiful? Good Lord. What? This pie, Margaret. It's absolutely terrific. The best bloody pie I've ever tasted. Oh, I knew you'd like it. More than like. You know, there's a police fundraiser coming up. I bet we could sell some of these and make a few bucks. Sold. <laughs> 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 How's it going? Oh, Thomas. What is it? That's it. We're sold out. <laughs> really? How many did we sell? Three dozen. We sold three dozen already. People seem to like them. This is rock me. This pie is incredibly delicious. Honestly, oh. I've never had a pie like it. <laughs> we may be onto something here, Margaret. Onto what? Something big. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. It's nice to see you. Make sure you take an extra pie for your loved ones. Oh, oh you get lost. These bloody strays are a nuisance around here, ladies. Thomas, we're almost sold out, and it's only our first day. <laughs> we're a hit. We're the talk of the town. <laughs> Looks like we're going to need to hire some help. Absolutely not. Why not? The recipe's a family secret, Thomas. I don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry to know it. What about a couple of waiters? What's the problem? Fine. But they stay out of the kitchen. It's a family business, Thomas. I want to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make a mint. Leave them wanting more. <laughs> Sir, these pies are divine. I can't stop eating them. No need to stop, Higgins. It's all money in my pocket. <laughs> I was thinking with the rat problem. Well, I haven't seen any lately, sir, have you? They seem to have disappeared. Mm. Mm. Ow! Ow! What's the matter? Oh, I think I've bitten into something. What is it? I think I've swallowed it. Well, what was it? I don't know! I think I've cracked my tooth as well. Perhaps your wife dropped something in? Not bloody likely. I'd best have a word with her. Mine's fine. There was something in this pie. Yes, meat. No, no, no. Something hard. A bit down on it. Oh, maybe it was your tooth. It wasn't my bloody tooth. It was a, a stone or some such thing. Well, I didn't put it in there. I never said you did. Well, if I didn't put it in there, then it wasn't in there. Something was in there. I never said it was your fault. But it could have got mixed in with whatever you put in the pie. Oh, fine. Perhaps it was in the meat. Right. Where does the meat come from? Thomas, I'm too busy right now. I have to make more pies. Just tell me the name of the shop. What does it matter? It matters because there was a bloody stone in it. Just leave it. Which butcher do we buy the meat from? I told you to leave it. Why is it such a bloody secret? Because it is. <laughs> now let me get on with my work. McSweeney. Right then.
Stop eating that. What? Why? Just stop. I'll explain later. Explain what? Just stop right now. Sir, they're so good. Bloody hell, Higgins. Throw it away and never come back here again. I don't understand, Thomas. Why are you at home? Thomas, what is it? You, we are out of the pie business. What are you talking about? I've got something to tell you. <laughs> then start telling. Honestly, Thomas, I don't know what's gotten into you today. You're acting like a madman. I'm not a madman. Far from it. Oh, you're making no sense. <laughs> it's the bloody butcher. You were talking in riddles, Thomas. What about the butcher? Have a seat. Go, go, have a seat. All right. Oh, good God. How do I tell you? Oh, Thomas, out with it. Margaret, you can't keep selling these pies. Why not? It's the meat. The butcher. I went over there, saw it with my own eyes. The meat they're using. I know, Thomas. It's how we get such a good price. You know what's in there? Of course I do. Dear God, what? Have you lost your mind? It makes perfect sense. Sense? Insanity is what it is. Oh, calm down. It's good for everyone. And they are delicious. No! Oh, it's all right, Thomas. The city is finally rid of vermin. Just as you wished. <laughs> The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Every father loves his daughter. He would shelter her from harm. He would kill for her. But would he die for her? The princess returns to her castle. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for taking on this extra work while Dr. Ogden is away. But of course, you know how much I adore little Susanna. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Did she just say sissy? Seems to be her name for it. The child can barely speak. Did someone tell her that the doll is named sissy? No, she named it herself. A kind old man in the park gave it to her. She's really taken to it. A man? A stranger? We must be very careful. I can't allow anyone near Susanna that could put her in danger. He was awfully kind. And as I say, she's really taken to the doll. It's rather odd looking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to bring anything into this house that could be harmful to Susanna. It's harmless. And, and look. <laughs> no. It's been fitted with a voice box of some kind. And that's not all it does. Press it again. Three distinct sounds. That's ingenious. Hmm. I think you like it as much as she does. Uh, <laughs> as long as it makes her happy. <laughs> <sighs> oh, Susanna, are you awake? Are you ready for lunch? All right. Here go. Oh. You are getting so big. What is it? Oh, 
Oh, you want your doll? All right. Oh. What is this? Did you draw this? Come now, Susanna. You have to eat your food. Milk. <laughs> what happened? What's all this? How did you get the bowl? gotten that tune stuck in my head. That's enough of that for today. Susanna. All right. All right. Time to go to sleep. I know. Susanna, <laughs> what on earth? I love you. All right, that's enough of this. <laughs> it is time to go to sleep. down and have a little sleep.
Hello? Someone there? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. What are you doing out of your crib? All right, we uh, should get you back in bed. Oh. Susanna. Ah! Susanna, Susanna, come here. Susanna, please give me the knife. Susanna. The following program contains violence and scenes disturbing to young viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Julia has begged off. She can't come. Hmm. What a shame. Oh, well, that's that then. But, sir, it's one day only. I wanted to see the little one at the fair. I have no interest if that's not the case. Me as well. Enjoy the candy floss, Higgins. I can go? Go on. Pop it before I change my mind. Oh, thank you, sir. You know, I've heard they have a mechanical man who will grant your dearest wish. I'm so looking forward to trying it. Oh, I wonder if I can find that chicken chocolate, too. Your wish made true. Society is a flourishing self. It's an unusual name for a health retreat. Trust me, you're going to love it. <laughs> I'm certainly curious. I have to say, though, place like this, Effie, it seems like an unusual fit for you. I'd have said the same a month ago. It's hard to describe, but ever since I started coming here, I just feel upbeat. Well, it could be partially due to being out of the city. I believe some of it's due to the country air, but it's mostly this teacher and the practices he's invented. I wouldn't trust him if he asked me. Oh, why do you say that? Well, they ain't very considerate neighbors for a start. Oh, you live around here? Next property over. Them folks ain't nothing but a bunch of misfits. The society is a bit unorthodox, but uh, the practices speak for themselves. Come, Julia. I fear we may be overdressed. Yes, the attire does require some getting used to. Detective Watts? I didn't realize you were a member of the society. Well, I've never seen you here before. I'm not a member, though I have visited a number of times. I'm intrigued by the teacher's idea of a unified self. What exactly is that? Self with no secrets. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Setia. I'm Sarah Gallo's assistant. A welcome session with the teacher will begin shortly in the hall, but in the meantime, non-residents are changing to their whites and choose seeker names. Non-residents? People live here? Those who require a more intensive experience can stay as long as they like. Like a sanatorium? No, like a retreat. What exactly is a seeker name? A word you choose that embodies what you're looking to gain here. It's how the teacher and everyone else will refer to you. How fascinating. I thought I'd miss the structure of a corset. It does take some getting used to, but you'll be grateful for the freedom of movement once classes begin. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. He's here. Oh, my. Yes, he cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? What on earth is he wearing? Sarah Gallo says it's a traditional garment from India. It is hot there. I suppose it's designed to keep them cool? My dear Joy, welcome back. <laughs> the harmony, wonderful to see you. The pleasure is mine. <laughs> and you are? Oh, Dr. Julia Ogden? Oh, I mean your seeker name. Oh, uh, Come I... Julia, you get to choose a name. Oh, oh well, uh, I'm, I'm here. Uh. Seeking presence in the present. Oh, a lofty aspiration. Welcome. Uh. Here. <laughs> and welcome, seekers. I am Sarah Gallo. I founded this society after traveling the world for many years in search of a means of unifying my heart and mind, which were often at odds. The teachings I offer are practices I created, which gave me the unification I was seeking. Movement to strengthen the body, guided contemplation to center the mind. Breath work to unleash the spirit and unbosoming to know the heart. Learn these practices, and I promise you, too, can be unified. Dear God. Cynthia, get help. She's not breathing. Dear God. She's dead. <gasps> I'm so sorry that such an upsetting occurrence has marred your first visit to the society. Had she been ill at all? Not that I know of. And what was her legal name? So many questions. What, are you a detective? Yes. Outside this community, I'm a member of the Toronto Constabulary. Oh, I see. Do you suspect foul play? I'm just gathering information to help local authorities. Her name was Alison Beckin. When was the last time either of you spoke to her? This morning, she was planning on foregoing the welcome ceremony to practice her breathwork. And what exactly is breathwork? It's a form of deep and rapid breathing. It's beneficial for self-awareness, emotional release, and clarity. Speaking of, we need to plan for the rest of the day, considering what happened. You'll call the police? I will. Oh, I doubt anyone will make it out today. Then I suppose it's up to us to determine what happened to Miss Beckin. I'm curious about this breath work. It sounds akin to controlled hyperventilation. Mm. I've tried it once or twice. That's a fair definition of it. Well, it sounds like it could be dangerous. No, no not at all. Saragala would never teach something that would cause harm. Well, perhaps not knowingly, but bodies can react in surprising ways to extreme experiences. I'd like to do a more thorough examination. In the meantime, I'll ask around, try to get a sense of Allison's movements this morning. I think we should inquire into her state of mind as well. There must have been a reason why she chose to do this breath work instead of attending the welcome session. How long did you know Allison? Oneness. Six weeks. 
We've shared a cabin since I arrived. Did you get on well? We were very close. Society is like a family. And how did she seem this morning? She'd returned to the cabin after I'd gone to sleep last night and was up and out when I woke up. Is that unusual? She'd been having extra sessions with Sarah Gallo. What, what kind of sessions? I wouldn't know. How long had she been here? Seven or eight months, I think. That's a long time to be removed from the world. It may seem so. But it can be necessary for a sensitive soul like Wenness. That's why I created the society. To give people solace. Society has changed my life, Sarah Gallo. Truly. Uh, but what is the goal? Do your teachings strengthen these sensitive souls so as to return to the real world? You don't think this is the real world? Well, uh, that tells me that you're not yet present in the present here. Ah, oh, just the man I wanted to see. Morning, sir. I just came by to get this. Is that right? Yes. Julia is at a health retreat in Huntsville, so I thought I would take the opportunity to give my bicycle a tune-up. That'll be quick work. You'll have more than enough time for this. Nathaniel Ryther, 3 Grace Vale Street. What's this about? Ryther is a friend of mine from the Masons. His wife's disappeared. You're to find her and bring her home discreetly. Is there a problem, Murdoch? Not at all, sir. Good, because Ryther's expecting you in half an hour. Good luck. Are you all right? As long as we live, we are blessed. I must admit, I am feeling the loss of oneness very acutely. Perhaps you should try some stretching. As you said, intentional movement is a good way to process Process emotions, emotions. yes. How wonderful to have your teachings reflect back from your students. That's a beautiful ring. Is it significant in some way? It is a reminder of why I, I do this work. Freedom will miss sharing a cabin with oneness. Perhaps you could stay with her. She could use your energy. right to it. I didn't intend on doing an internal examination, but once I found this. What's this? It's a mix of blood and saliva. I found it in the victim's mouth and throat, which got me curious. It suggests she died of asphyxiation. She choked on something? That's the interesting thing. I found no signs of a foreign body in her windpipe. I believe the asphyxia was due to poisoning. Poisoning? By what? The spasms before she died suggest some kind of paralytic, perhaps water hemlock or strychnine. Neither of which is something someone would ingest willingly. Exactly. Meaning, this was a murder. Eleanor took a trip to Niagara Falls a month and a half ago, but never returned. May I ask, Mr. Ryder, why you've waited until now to look for her? I presume she'd come home eventually. But something's changed your mind? A wire transfer withdrawing funds from our household account earlier this week. And you took that as a sign that your wife wasn't planning on coming home? I took it as a sign Eleanor's being held under duress. She knows better than to make a transaction like that without my permission. Very well. I'll do my best to get to the bottom of this. Yes. See that you do. Here's a photograph of Eleanor for your reference. Thank you. I'll begin by having a detailed look at this room. Do as you please. Someone poisoned her? Keep your voice down. We're alone in the woods, Julia. Well, be that as it may, we don't know anyone here well enough to know who we can trust. I spoke to two people who said our victim had an argument with Sarah Gallo last night. 
You're not suggesting he killed her, are you? I'm not suggesting anything. Well, Miss Saragallo does have an intense sway over people. That's not evidence of wrongdoing. Well, true, but it's not very healthy, especially for those susceptible to undue influence. People believe in his teachings. That doesn't mean he's bewitched them. Well, I didn't say that it does, but if he fought with Allison, then... And what was this supposed fight about? We don't know, as of yet. Then I suggest we not get ahead of ourselves. Forgive me, Effie, but I'm not sure you're entirely objective when it comes to the matter of Saragallo. Excuse me? I've seen the way you look at him. <laughs> what is it you're suggesting, Julia? Movement class begins oh. in 10 minutes. Thank you, Stillness. I think I'll go and freshen up first. Surely you see it too. She's enamored with him. She was rather passionate in her defense, but it's George she's truly enamored with. Well, George is away, and we all have moments of weakness. I hope you don't think Sarah Gallo's undue influence had anything to do with me agreeing to room with freedom. I didn't mean to suggest that you would really let your fondness for him blind you. I should hope not. I just wonder whether you've come to the society seeking to fill the hole left by George's absence. This has nothing to do with George, Julia. This must be freedoms. Julia. What is it? Strychnine. You don't think? What are you doing in my things? <sighs> Those are mine. Strychnine is quite poisonous. Not according to my doctor. He gave these to me as a tonic for my nerves. Not that I need them now, thanks to Sarah Gallo. Did one of us ever have any of those tablets, Freedom? Of course not. A nerve tonic was the last thing she needed. She wasn't an anxious person? The farthest thing from it. Why are you asking these questions? Oneness was poisoned, possibly with strychnine. You, you think I did it? Well, I'll have to test these tablets to be sure. Do you really think she could have poisoned Allison? Luckily, there's a simple way to find out. Strychnine is insoluble in water. The more this tablet dissolves, the less strychnine is present. It's disappeared completely. Freedom's tonic doesn't contain enough strychnine to harm anyone. And I believe an apology is in order. I assume you are familiar with this room, Miss... Franklin, sir. And I am. I've been with the Writhers for two years. Does anything appear to be missing or out of place, as far as you can tell? No, sir. It's just as it was when Mrs. Writher left on our trip. And you've kept up your cleaning duties of this room while the lady of the house has been gone? I dusted just the other day. Oh. Well, if that is the case, Miss Franklin, then perhaps you can explain to me the significance of this. Something has clearly been removed from this mantle since you last dusted just the other day. Oh, how strange. Hmm. Perhaps we should ask Mr. Ryder about it. Good. And arms wide, as if to capture the sun. And release, bringing your hands together and clasp in the center. And breathe. May peace be in your mind and in your hearts. 
For those of you here for the first time, recordings of Sarah Gallo's guided contemplations are available for purchase in the office. How entrepreneurial. Shh. Our apologies, Calm. He's still working on coming into alignment with his seeker name. Clearly. I noticed you two were late to class. Did you find something? Yes, some tablets in Freedom's room that contain strychnine, but not enough to kill anybody. So, not her? No. I'd still like to search the area where Allison does her breath work. Perhaps there's something there. I want to speak with Sarah Gallo and find out what he and Allison argued about last night. I really don't think... Th you know what? Never mind. You realize eventually he has nothing to do with this. Sarah Gallo? Sorry for interrupting you. No, not at all. Please, sit. Uh, I understand this is where one must did her breath work this morning. Yes, I was hoping to feel uh, some of her energy. I also understand that you two argued last night. We had a constructive conversation rooted in passion. And what was this constructive conversation about? Oneness had plateaued. That's why we were having private sessions. She struggled with not progressing more quickly. I bet you had some wise words for her. No, actually. When in a moment like Oneness was in, all a teacher can do is listen, and be supportive. Pushing away causes more pain. Speaking of teaching, uh, are you about to start another breathwork session soon? Not for a few hours. Oh. Well, in that case, would you guide me through a breathwork session? Of course. isn't what you think, Detective. I, I didn't steal or anything. But you do know what's happened to the missing item from the mantle. Miss Franklin, my duty is to locate Mrs. Ryther. I have no wish to bring you any trouble. I swear you won't tell Mr. Ryther. That depends what you tell me. It's a vase. What's missing? A very valuable one. Mrs. Ryther asked me to bring it down to Crawford's pawn shop to be sold. You've had contact with her? A telephone call the other morning. I think she waited until she knew Mr. Ryther would be at work. What happened to the money from the sale? She asked me to leave it with the clerk. Said she would pick the money up herself. I know how it sounds, detective, but it's the truth. I swear. find anything? Possibly. There's a ledger in the office. Students are donating large sums to the society. Even Allison? She gave $500. That's a lot of money. Especially to learn teachings that are, when you look closely, nothing but a mishmash of traditions from other cultures. Well, yes, I suspect Sarah Gallo invented unbosoming after reading Dr. Freud. Mm. 
But if you know this, why do you still come? Saragawa's idea of the unified self is intriguing, regardless of where his teachings originated. Are you still trying to reconcile your private proclivities with your work? Yes. You think Saragawa can help you with that? I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, maybe not everyone feels the same way. What are you suggesting? Well, what if Allison discovered that she paid to learn something that she could find for free in the library? Sarah Gallo might do a lot to keep that quiet. Did you find anything of note where Allison was practicing breathwork? I did. Incense. What if Allison didn't ingest strychnine, but inhaled it? From the incense, you mean? Wouldn't she have realized? Not necessarily. Strychnine burns colorless and odorless. We need to find out where that incense came from. And I have an idea where to start. And relax. Wonderful work. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel... I feel like there's a... A storm in my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll give you time to process. This might help. Like this. Practice your contemplation. And we can speak later. Gallo gave Allison the incense that killed her. There may be remnants of strychnine in here. I don't know. Vengeance is an obvious motive. What? No, I can't be held responsible for what happened. Juanus's death was clearly an accident. No, it was incense laced with strychnine. Presume this is yours? Yes, but I, I share that with others who need extra support. Such as oneness? Yes, and joy earlier. Why do you think that I need extra support? Your heart and mind are at war, Joy. You love and yet you despair, and you want to escape those feelings by any means necessary. But I did not know that incense was laced with anything. Please, try to sit back. If that's true, the killer could have been targeting you all along. I heard what happened. We must send everyone away to protect Saragala. I don't think that's advisable. If someone's targeting him, everyone here is a suspect. We need to keep them in our sights. My mala, where is it? Uh, it was broken. Attack. Judging by the marks on your neck, the attacker may have tried to strangle you with it. I must have the ring that was strung upon it back. I'll try to find it for you. 
And how do you plan to ferret out the scoundrel trying to kill Saragallo? For starters, I'd like to know if anyone might have had motive. Yes. Our neighbor, Percy Delwyn. He hates us. Then I'll speak to him first. Wait, I may have more luck. He drove us in from the train station. Here, apply pressure until the bleeding stops. Very well, I'll check alibis of the other fellowship members. Wait. Setia can do that with joy. Please, stay here. I need you to keep me safe. Mr. Crawford. Detective Murdoch, can I help you? I have a few questions. I believe a woman came in a few days ago looking to collect some money for a vase. Perhaps you recognize her from this photograph. I'm afraid I can't help you. <laughs> One of the chief reasons for my success is the discretion I show my customers. I happen to be familiar with the owner of said vase, and I suspect that he would not appreciate knowing that you purchased it without proper documentation of ownership. Vaz? <laughs> what Vaz? <clears throat> I don't know anything about a Vaz. <clears throat> Mr. Crawford, I, I just need to know if you recognize the woman from the photograph. <sighs> she was in a few days ago. How did she seem? Fine. Not under any duress? None that I saw. She was in a real hurry, though. Did she say why? Something about a train. She had to get back to a social something or other in Huntsville. Might she have used the word society? Yes. That was the exact word. <laughs> you should be a detective. That's a list of everyone here. Should make checking the alibis easier. Thank you. Have you found the teacher's ring? No, no sign of it. Well, that's a shame. Well, everyone should have been doing their chores when Saragala was being attacked. Sorry to bother you. Not at all. Thank you, Freedom. You go by Calm, is that correct? Yes. A and your legal names are... Your legal names are Nora and David. Is that right? That is. What of it? Were you working here together all afternoon? We have been. What's with all the questions? If you must know, we're looking into... Joy was just helping me to confirm everyone's setup with chores. There was no need to lie. And even less need to worry those who are innocent with the truth. Apologies. Uh, I didn't recognize you in that getup. That is no excuse. Sure it is. I don't let any of that society lot trespass on my property. It's not my fault you got indoctrinated so fast. I did no such thing. In actual fact, I'm quite suspicious of the whole thing. Especially that Saragallo. Is he the one that runs around in his under things? Actually, it's a traditional undergarment, but that's beside the point. I you said that you don't trust the group. What do you think's going on over there? Old under things is nice enough, I guess. It's that lady I don't trust. Setia? What has she done? She's buying up all the land, blocking my access to my best fishing spots. She's a bully, and she's a criminal. Criminal? Why would you say that? I got proof. I'll show you. To know someone thinks me a fraud, it's devastating. But perhaps not entirely wrong? What do you mean? You're charging students handsomely to teach them little more than adaptations of ancient practices. I know nothing about the money. Sedia handles all that. Mm. And your teachings? If you are familiar with them, why are you here? That's not relevant at the moment. Oh, please, humor me. Very well. 
I've been searching for a means of unifying the public and private parts of myself. Thought you may have something to offer. A unified self does not necessarily present itself in its fullness at all times. I'm not sure I follow. You can be unified within without sharing that fullness with others. For example, I am Sarah Gallo, the teacher. But outside the society, I am simply Stephen Lucas. Huh. So you admit you're a fraud? No. No. I believe in my teachings. And I am Sarah Gallo, but it's not my whole self. It's a persona I adopt to encourage my followers to believe in my teachings. Does that make it any less a lie? If it is a lie, then it is a useful lie for those I serve. Harmony. The only thing that matters is that you know and are comfortable with your true self. That's what frees us and truly unifies the heart and mind. Lovely garden you've got here. Oh, yes, it is. I can't take credit for it. I'm just in charge of pulling the weeds. So have you been working out here alone all afternoon? Yes. My own personal bit of heaven. Setia and Sarah Gallo saw what I needed when I came a few months back. It's been a bomb. Your name's Joseph, correct? And you go by the secret name Peace? Yes. I came seeking it after the loss of someone close to me. Have you found it? Hmm. I'm working on it. You go by joy? Yes. Have you found the joy you're looking for here? No. I, I think I'm beginning to understand why that is. Where did you get this? Percy Delman, the man who lives in the next property over. Apparently, Setia is a confidence woman by the name of Alice Shen. Says here she was jailed for several months after attacking someone who found her out. Do you think this could be related to the attempts on Sarah Gallo's life? Perhaps he uncovered her past misdeeds and wanted her out? She does handle all the financial dealings for the society, and judging by the sums in the ledger, she had a lot to lose. Does she have an alibi for the time of his attack? I didn't even think to ask. I think it's time we did. Stop! He attacked me! She's blackmailing me. Blackmailing? How? I'm leaving the society. She won't give me back the money that I paid. No, those were donations. Donations for living expenses that I no longer require. What does this have to do with blackmail? She has recordings of my own bosomy sessions. And she said if I went to the police about the money, she's going to give that to my family. Is that true? Does Sarah Gallo know? No, he would never. Please don't tell him. I beg you. You're exploiting someone's innermost secrets. You deserve no favors. Well, it turns out that you were right about Sarah Gallo, and I owe you an apology. You were right, too, about me using this place as a way to fill the hole left by George. I shouldn't feel badly about that. It's a completely understandable reaction to missing someone. I'm just so worried about him and angry. He left without so much as asking me. He'll be back before long, safe and sound, I'm sure of it. Julia? William? Thank you, Julia. What on earth are you wearing? Well, hello to you, too. And the more pertinent question is, what are you doing here? Oh, the inspector has me looking for his friend's wife that's gone missing. You think she might be here? I do. Do you recognize her? Well, that's freedom. Freedom, you say? 
the name that she goes by here. Ah. And where might she be? Shameful. Recording unbosoming sessions and blackmail. So you didn't know? Of course not. Were you aware of this? Yes. Setia had told me that she had turned over a new leaf. Clearly, that's not the case. May I speak with her? Yes. For all her many faults, it seems as though Setia is not our killer. How can you be sure? She has no motive. Sarah Gallo knew about her past. But the, the blackmail and the recordings... Were both news to him. She may have attacked Calm to keep her secret, but she had no reason to kill Sarah Gallo. Then who in heaven is trying to? Something tells me those recordings may give us a clue. It's strange. It's already unlocked. Good Lord, there must be two dozen recordings in here. Black Mountain students. I can't believe you'd do such a thing. I was trying to protect you and the society in case we were ever faced with questions. You've been making them that long. Ever since Well began to struggle. I was worried that something terrible would happen, and I was right. Oh, I'm sorry. Who is well? Joy Knight, former student. He killed himself six months ago. Those initials, JK, it was his ring on your mama? And his ring that disappeared when you were attacked. The two things must be related. Perhaps there's something of interest in one of Well's recordings. But one of them is missing. None were missing earlier. I checked before I spoke to Calm. Which means someone's taken it in the last hour. Is anyone currently at the Society connected to Joey? Uh, I don't believe so. None of the current students were here before he died. It's peace. How do you know? His legal name is it's Joseph. He did arrive shortly after Joey died, and he told me that he came here seeking peace after the loss of someone close to him. I have an idea where to find him. I try to let go of bad thoughts, but they just come back stronger. It's as though there's a monster peace? inside of me telling me I'm worthless. Joseph? I never meant to hurt oneness. I know. The incense was intended for Sarah Gallo, but when that failed, you tried a more direct attack. He pushed my son to take his own life. He deserves to be punished. Maybe. But not by you. <sighs> I know I'm going to jail. What, please? Just give me one more minute. Hear my Joy's voice. This was recorded just a few days before he... You're not trying hard enough, Joey. If you wanted to be free of these thoughts, you would be. I don't know what to do. I am... Please, help me, sir. So help. terribly sorry, peace. I won't have peace until you pay for my son's death. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> to find me at your husband's request Nathaniel does nothing for six weeks but the minute I touch the household accounts why didn't you tell your husband where you were if I told him he would probably have had me committed so you wish to stay I do I finally know what it is to be at peace I'd like to keep it that way if you'll keep my secret Seems you're losing some students. Well, even if only one remains, that's reason enough to carry on the work of the society. You plan to stay on? Of course. I hope to see you both back sometime soon. Uh, I, I think it's time that I 
return to being just Effie. But you're still so conflicted. I can see it. I am, but I, I think it's time that I learn to face the despair I'm feeling rather than chase some impossible joy. That is so brave. Thank you. And Harmony? Will I see you again? Oh, I don't think so. Though I am grateful for what you've taught me. I used to believe I was lying if I wasn't bringing my full self to my job and my public life. And now? Well, our conversation earlier made me realize some separation between my public and private selves may be a benefit to all parts of my life. That is wonderful to hear. Is that you, William? It is indeed. How did it go with the inspector? Oh, I don't think he actually believes that I haven't found Eleanor yet. Oh, am I interrupting something? <laughs> Not at all. I'm just practicing stretches I learned at the society. <laughs> it turns out I am a lot more flexible than I imagined. Is that so? Yes. I can show you if you like. 